Today you're going to get a question in the Bears Hall of Discipline. If God sent a prophet to you and said, you're going to be slain in a very brutal way, you're going to go down in history as a shyster and a hypocrite and spend eternity with the cursed, would you not repent of your sin and be broken and say, what, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to change? What, how can I change this? Right? That's what I would do. Some people are so steeped in their sin, they refuse to submit to God, even knowing eternity is ahead of them. Eternity is at stake. And I leave you with that little question. What would you do? If a prophet came to you and said, God's going to judge you because of your sins in your life. Myself, I would repent and say, God, change me. I want to do whatever it takes, Lord. What would you do? And now let's read. First Samuel chapter 3. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision and it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laying down to sleep. When the expression, the lamp has gone out, or in the New Testament church in Revelation, when the Lord says, I'm going to remove your lampstand from your midst, you don't want to have that happen in your life, or your home, or your family, or your marriage, or your church. You don't want to have that happen. Let's continue on. The Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. I'm here, Lord. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again, and he went and lay down. Now Samuel thought that, um, Eli was calling for him, but actually it was the Lord. Verbally, audibly, physically he could hear it. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed Unto him. He had not reached even as a child. He had some faith, but had not quite come to fruition, where he was a prophet of the Lord. And he, would, he was one of the great men of the earth as a prophet. But he was still yet a young lad, and God calls him here now at a very young age. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou dost call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel in which both ears of every one that heareth, it shall tingle. And when that happens, you know something big is about to happen. Verse 12. And that day I will perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken concerning his house when I began. I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile and restrained them not. If you are a preacher, minister, home church pastor, whatever, and you have kids involved in your ministry, and your kids are involved in gross sin, get them out of your ministry now. Don't wait till service is over. They're playing the piano, banging the drums, ushering, counseling, Sunday schooling. Get them out, get them up and out, say, go get your life in order. You can't be involved in a ministry. Get, handle it. Let your job as a man 
and a husband and a leader and a preacher and an overseer and a facilitator. You can't stop your kids from sinning. They're going to sin, but you got to correct them. Like Eli here, he refused to correct them and God judged them for it. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice or offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here am I. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord hath said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. Samuel told him every wit, and hid nothing from him, and he said, It is the Lord, let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Now we're back to the question I asked you. Verse 18, Samuel told him every wit and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. Why would Eli not hop up, call his sons to him and say, you are out of the temple ministry. You must leave the temple area. You are removed from the family. God would have mercy on him, but he refused. He refused to correct his children. Moms and dads out there, don't fall in that trap. Doesn't matter how you raised your kids. The time's going to come where they have to make the choice. And a lot of preachers' kids make really bad choices. And when that happens, the preacher's got to address the problem, say you need to get out of the ministry. Whether it's Sunday school or whatever they're doing, get out. Because that is your job, to correct your children. You're never done raising your children, by the way. It doesn't matter if you're a grandpa or a grandma. You are never done correcting and instructing your children until they're looking at your tombstone and your tombstone said, I'm not here, I've gone to heaven. I hope to see you there. You're never done correcting, instructing, guiding your children. They're your little lammy pies. They're your little bear cubs. You just keep the love flowing. And the love, sometimes correction. A lot of times it's correction. Actually, most of the time it's correction. You know, if you got a naughty one. But that's what they got to have till they get a contrite heart, a repentant heart, and turn to the Lord. When they turn to the Lord, then the love, the love flow happens. But without being connected to the Lord, you can't really experience love. Because in him do all things flow. And the beginning of that is love. But you must repent and believe and have faith in Jesus Christ before the love flow can happen. God bless you, friends. We'll see you next time.